There are so many options available today when it comes to learning about the history of our world. And of course, any world history program is going to come with its own set of prejudices and bias. It's up to us as parent educators how we choose to work with that. So as you can see here, I sort of, maybe, like collecting world history spines. And today I wanted to share inside each of these with you so that you can see for yourself some of the similarities and differences between them. There really are so many ways we can take a deep dive into world history. We may choose to begin with a great encyclopedia as our basis and use that as a jumping off point into each era. Or we may like to use the storytelling approach to captivate our children. Then there are the narrative based programs, generally more suited to older children. And then of course, for some of us, we may wish to spend some time just touching lightly on some of the historical events. And I have books to cover all of those options to share with you here today. Personally, I don't think that it matters how you're going to tackle world history, but having a great encyclopedia on your bookshelves is imperative. All three of these are great books from great publishing companies and I don't think you go wrong with choosing any one of these options. Let's start with the Kingfisher History Encyclopedia. So as you can see by the contents, this one covers a lot. And then it's broken down into the various eras of history. So what I like about the Kingfisher book is it has a timeline running across the top of the pages. So whilst it covers loads and loads of information, each section in time or each small period in time is really only one or two pages. So it's just enough to give you that really brief overview and then you can go off and delve further into that. And moving on to the Osborne Encyclopedia of World History. If you own any Osborne books at all, you already know that all of their books are fabulous. Again, we have a contents page filled to the brim with events and places in history. The great thing about the, uh, the great thing about the Osborne books, sorry, there's a bit of glare there. The great thing about the Osborne books is they all come with internet links. So on certain pages, they will give you links to pages that Osborne have curated so that you can go to those links and seek out more information. So this one's bright. The pages are a little bit glossier, I think, in the Osborne than they were in the Kingfisher. There is no timeline across the top of the page of these, although the illustrations are captivating inside the Osborne Encyclopedia. At the top of each page, it does show you roughly how many years ago we are looking at inside the pages of this particular book. So here on this particular page, we're looking at circa 1600 BC to roughly 1200 BC. But as you get further into the book, you can see that there is a timeline included along the bottom of the page. There's not a huge amount of difference between the Osborne and the Kingfisher. Here we have the DK, History Year by Year. This particular book is larger in size than both the Osborne and the Kingfisher. And this one shows a very thorough timeline across the bottom of the pages. And the DK book here actually includes mostly photographic images rather than hand-drawn illustrations that you would have seen inside the Osborne and the Kingfisher. These two are great for a lighter, less in-depth look into history. Maybe you just want to touch on it for 12 months before you do a big deep dive, or maybe it's just time for a refresher, or maybe you have a child that just simply doesn't enjoy learning about history. These books are great to be able to get some of that information out 
without having to spend weeks and months on end learning about the subject. And Bill Bryson's A Really Short History of Everything is fabulous if you want something completely different to a standard history. This particular one is abridged and adapted from his full length book, a short history of everything, making it perfect for kids. It's also somewhat more scientific in nature, as you'll see by the topics covered inside. And What Happened in the World is a book full of maps. And this one showcases the most important historical events and topics. In so remember, as we look at this one, this is the abridged version for children. So we have the table of contents. And as you can see straight away, it covers different topics than what your standard history spine would cover. It covers a lot more scientific based concepts. But it's more cartoony in nature with smaller bite sized pieces of information. A great one for younger children who are possibly just beginning to delve into the study of history. Another DK book is the What Happened in the World When. So we begin with a timeline and then we step straight in to all the maps. And so as you can see, each map gives us a loads and loads of information about what's going on at that particular time. So again, this is another really different way of looking at historical concepts. From there, we can move more into a narrative style history program and the Human Odyssey by K-12 fits that bill perfectly. I do need to add one caveat to this program. It's no longer in print, but I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. This is a middle grade program and the K-12 school uses this, I think, in around about seventh, eighth grade. Personally, unless you have a child that absolutely adores history and really wants to dive deep, then I think this program is perfect from about grade six, seven, all the way through to the high school years. This is a very different style approach to any other of the narrative programs that I've seen. And I'm so thankful to have found all three books in the program secondhand. I also had no idea until just recently that there are actually student workbooks that go along with these. We don't have them, we've never used them. They're not necessary, but they do cover comprehension style questions, quizzes and other activities. So as I said, these are no longer in print. They are going to have to be something that you try and hunt down secondhand. They're probably not going to be easy. I have to be honest. And when you do find them secondhand, they're generally not cheap. So my advice is to have a look on the Amazon secondhand marketplace, thrift books, and sometimes Abe books as well have copies. What I like about this program is the writing is clear and concise, engaging, and it does not talk down to the reader in any way. It's also not Eurocentric, which is a real bonus in a history program. There are no comprehension questions cluttering up the pages within these books, just clear, colorful maps, illustrations, and photographs that go along with the narrative. And I really wish they would bring this one back into print because it's such a great goal and it probably, out of everything that I own, one of my favourites. The K-12 Human Odyssey are uh, hardcovers, relatively thick. This is volume one in the three volume set. These books are written directly to the child that are going to be reading, but of course, they work great as read alouds as well. Filled with varying styles of illustrations, photographs, map work, and stories throughout the guide. And then we have this range that teach history to children through storytelling. In many ways, these are all very similar, but then in others, they are slightly different. So I will give you a glimpse inside each of these as well so that you can see them for yourself. So let's take a look inside volume one of the story of the world. So volume one is ancient times. 
Story of the World being an extremely popular history program within homeschool circles, written by Susan Wise Bauer. Story of the World covers the classical method of home education, where the child rotates through four years of a structured style of learning. This is written mostly from a neutral standpoint, although the author is Christian, and that does come through, I believe, in parts of this book. Okay, so it's not overly thick, although the font is quite small. We have our contents page, covers quite clearly what we're going to be looking at inside this particular book. So we actually have 42 chapters. So definitely a lot more chapters than what you will tend to find. There are weeks in a school year. So that could potentially be an issue and it may be something that you need to consider uh, when you're looking at starting Story of the World and trying, if that's something that you like to achieve, to complete it within a standard school year. And then we get basically straight into the narrative. We used Story of the World several years ago, hence why I have it here on my shelves. We used it relatively successfully. There were never really any major issues for us. I liked that it is a narrative-based program. Book one starts at a slightly lower level than the other books, and they each get a little bit more difficult or more involved as the books progress. So we cover a wide variety. It covers various gods from ancient times, mythology, it definitely covers ancient Greece, ancient Rome mythology. So it just works its way. Simple illustrations scattered throughout. Uh, every now and then if it needs to be, there'll be little notes to parents. The maps that you'll see here inside the story component will be maps that the children will actually use as part of the activity guide if you choose to purchase that as well. So as you can see, it works its way through the ancient times of it does an okay job of focusing on various areas around the world there's clearly a distinct lean towards the history of christianity in here it is written by a christian author so i think that that's to be expected in the appendix at the back we have a bit of a timeline you may choose to refer to we have a list of maps and the chronological pages of those. This is quite a good one. Um, helps with pronunciation of names, places, events, those types of things. Often we can get stuck on those. So there's a nice big list of those in here. And then we have our index. So it makes it easy if you want to go back and find anything that you need. And so that is Story of the World. Again, that is the first. There are four volumes, I believe, in Story of the World. But again, they are all relatively similar in layout and how they work. A Little History of the World, and I'm not going to pronounce this correctly, by E. H. Gombrich. International bestseller. I just want to give you a really quick um, snippet from the inside cover. So in 1935, with a doctorate in art history and no prospect of a job, the 26-year-old Ernst Gombrich was invited to attempt a history of the world for younger readers. Amazingly, he completed the task in an intense six weeks and it was published in Vienna to immediate success. And so given that it is written in 1935 and the author is a Christian, uh, it of course is written with a 
theistic Eurocentric world view. Uh, and so like any history book, it comes with its own set of bias and it does only give brief mention to history outside of Europe. Um, and of course, yes, it also leaves out a lot of the gruesome parts of history. But we do need to keep in mind that this is written to be read with children. And it was written in 1935 and then later revised in around 2005. I had a quick look on my Goodreads app because I'm a lover of Goodreads and always like to check some of the reviews on there. And it does come with excellent reviews on Goodreads. So I do think this is one uh, worth checking out if you're looking for something a little bit different um, for world history with your children. Okay, we have A Child's History of the World by V. M. Hillier. This particular author also wrote A Child's Geography of the World. This was written shortly after World War One, and this little snippet in the introduction uh, explains the author's purpose. In common with all children of my age, I was brought up on American history and given no other history but American. Year in and year out, year after year for eight or more years. So far as I knew, 1492 was the beginning of the world. Any events or characters before that time, reference to which I encountered by any chance, were put down in my mind in the same category with fairy tales. Christ and his times, of which I heard only in Sunday school, were to me mere fiction without reality. They were not mentioned in any history that I knew, and therefore, so I thought, must belong not to a realm in time and space, but to a spiritual realm. To give an American child only American history is as provincial as to teach a Texas child only Texas history. So that was his reasoning to go on and write this particular history book for children. For quite some time, this book actually sat dormant and out of print, but there were many, many folks seeking out second-hand copies and so they brought it back in to print. And again, I don't know if that's gone back out of print. I didn't check that before I filmed this. My apologies. I probably should have done that, but I didn't. Um, I think probably the best thing about this book is the way in which it is written. The author just seems to have a knack for speaking to children so that he is easily understood. And yet he does not talk down to them. It's just over 400 pages and as you can see it's minimal very simple images. It's a pretty big read although as you can see as well the size of the font certainly makes it appealing for children. Hillier is a Christian man of course he's a man of his era and that influence can definitely be felt within the pages of this book but it's another example of narrative story based history for children. The Story of Mankind by Hendrik Willem van Loom and it's been updated by John Merriam. So The Story of Mankind was originally published in 1921 and it has had I believe quite a few updates since then. A brief look at the contents page shows you that it covers all the major eras in historical uh, times like we would see in some of our more modern day history texts. This particular author chooses to take on a more casual writing style and the early pages of the book are aimed at around about a sixth grade reading level and this makes it really nice as a read aloud uh, style book for the whole family to read together. So whilst the author is a Christian it is actually written from the viewpoint of a secular humanist as you would have seen with some of those pages just covered then. Well at least for the most part. Anyway. So throughout he does his best to maintain a storytelling attitude as more updates have been made to the book the reading level has increased 
and many people do use this now as a junior high school history text. So that's another one to add to your list of something to look at uh, in regards to history for your children. The story of mankind. Okay, let's have a look through History Quest. History Quest is a relatively new history program put out by Pandaya Press. If you haven't heard of these guys before, these are a secular homeschooling uh, curriculum publisher and they have been working for some time on bringing out a quality literature based secular history program and so that is what History Quest is. This is the first book, Early Times, Prehistory to 8th Century. Pandaya Press have pitched this as an elementary history reader. So let's have a look inside at this one. So we have our table of contents. And this particular one works right through to 26 chapters. So straight away, we can see that this is broken down in a manner that would E more easily align with a school year. Um, it will probably also give you a week or two up your sleeve depending on how you worked through this particular guide. And here we get straight into the narrative. History Quest does contain simple illustrations, not all the way throughout generally just at the beginning of chapters. And for any of the secular folk watching, I think that this is the part that you'll appreciate the most, where History Quest chooses to begin in Paleolithic times. In homeschooling history curriculum, that one can be a little difficult to find. So I do quite like that. History Quest has the main narrative and then it has History Hop, which little history-based stories um, that are written to the child and will generally tell a story about a person or people living in that particular time. And so History Quest follows that same pattern all the way through. There is, of course, an activity guide that goes along with the history quest. Personal preference as to whether you get something like that. Really, there is nothing wrong in my opinion of simply just reading history and enjoying history as a read aloud option and discussing it together. And then as we come to the end, we have a table of illustrations, table of maps that are included, and an index page. And of course, as I mentioned, there is the History Quest study guide that you can choose to purchase to go along with this. So this particular book comes in soft cover, PDF download, and audio. I'm not sure about hardback, but I don't think I saw that. I think it's just those three options. And you can find that one on the Pandaya Press website. So that's History Quest Early Time. So there you go. That's a huge pile of history spines for you to consider today. I hope that helped in some way, shape or form. Um, I just, I thought giving a comparison across all of them in the one video may be helpful to some of you. If you have any questions at all about any of them, pop them down below. I'll do my best to help you out. And if you did get value from today's video, I'd love to invite you to hit that like button. And until next time, bye for now.